When you've edited your pictures in Lightroom, you can change them to black and white in the develop mode. You can use either the presets on the left hand side or you can just change it to black and white here as well on the top corner. So here you can change it to black and white. I'm going to use a preset for black and white um, and I've got some landscape, high contrast, punch, low contrast, flat. If you look through it, these are the sort of things that you may want to be able to achieve in your actual final print. We don't really want a low contrast. Um, maybe we could have it a bit punchy and we could do maybe, but I think high contrast will definitely do it for us. I'm going to apply this to all of the pictures by selecting all of them, Command and A, and then pressing the sync button at the bottom. This will then calibrate it all and every single picture will turn black and white at the bottom. I'm also going to make sure that all my pictures are cropped to 5 by 7 This is the paper that we're using. And I'm going to just crop all the pictures ever so slightly. I'm just going to go through each single photograph. I'm not going to print all of these pictures, but just so I can make a decision, I'm going to crop them anyway. While I'm cropping them, I can have a little look at what I think is a good picture. Some sky's missing. This will then print out white. It might not look quite good for what I want in a final print. So this is something that I'm also always looking for when I'm making a digital negative or even when I'm just looking at my own negatives in the dark room. Um, you want something with a good high contrast. This one's going to work really well. There's a sky in there. Um, so you've got an actual defined border around your prints. Again, no sky in here. As it's a digital print now, I could take this into Photoshop and actually add a sky, which I can always show you on another YouTube video. And some of these are going to work really well in the dark room. They've got really nice high contrast. Um, but I'm going to show you something else that I'm going to also look for as well when I'm looking at my prints. Okay, so that's all the pictures edited. This is definitely a really good one for um, a digital negative. The only thing I'm going to do is, um, first of all, now it's black and white. I now need to invert it. So to invert it, I'm just going to put my tone curve all the way down to the bottom on the white and then on the black, turn it all the way up the other way. So you can see now that it's completely the opposite of what it was before. Now though, while I'm looking at it, I need to have a look at the sort of the shadows and the highlights because I need a little bit of contrast in those areas. So I'm just going to add a little bit more to those areas by just pulling the sliders back and forth to get a really nice high contrast. So I'm definitely going to use this one as my digital negative. And I'm going to use this one as well. So I'm going to just switch them back up again, like so. I'm going to use this one because I think this is going to work really well as a digital negative as well. So again, I'm going to pop it like this. Um, I would like to use one of the other ones, but the way that it is at the moment, it's a little bit dull. It's a little bit flat. Um, there's no sky in there. Um, so what I might do is I might just crop this one tighter, save me having to put a sky in, and there we go, and again, pop it down, and I'm just going to tweak the black a little bit, as you can see, so I'm just going to make it a little bit darker, give it a little bit more contrast there, and that's going to work really well as a digital negative. So the three, the four that I've now selected, I'm going to highlight on here. There we go. I'm going to go to print. And I've already set it up. This is an A4 page. Let's show rulers and then I can exactly see how big these are. Ten centimeters. That would be perfect, to be honest. 
Right then, so now I'm going to print it and send it to the printer here. So, um, and I'm just going to press the print, and then it's going to go to my printer here. I'm going to use the last set in use, which is basically black and white and on glossy paper because we're going to print it out on a digital transfer film. Well, is actually if I save it to JPEG here or I print it to the MFD, you can actually make a paper negative as well, not a digital negative. So digital negatives are quite costly, um, but paper negatives are relatively cheap to, um, to, to, to make. And I'm just going to save these because I can't print from my printer. So paper negative, and then once that's done, I'm going to then send it to the MFD to print it from a normal black and white printer here at the college. There we go. Hi guys, so I'm in the dark room and I'm going to show you just some basics again about how to set up your enlarger because this is really, really key to making a great print. Now, I've got some digital negatives here rather than some negatives. So this is what we would call a contact print, a little bit like your contact sheets that you've made before. Some of the things that keep coming up with your prints are that they're kind of muddy and they're a little bit grey. Now that's all to do with these colours up here. So we've got cyan, magenta and yellow. Now these are really good if you're doing colour, but we're doing black and white. So the only one you need to really pay attention to is the magenta. Now, the paper that you use is called multi-graded paper, which means that it can have lots of different grades. Let's turn on the enlarger and you'll be able to see a little bit better up here. So typically when you come in, they're usually all on zero, zero. Um, and you change the magenta and you can see that the, it's changing its red in there as well. So it's getting stronger and stronger. So make sure the least that you want to put in there is 50. 80 is a midpoint, you know, and the higher the, the number you go, the more contrast you're going to get. So if your pictures are not coming out with a good, strong contrast of lots of white, mid grays and black, then you want to increase this. Now, I like my pictures to have a high contrast, so I'm going to go with 90 today. Okay, so that's your first thing that you must do. Then you're going to work down to the bottom. Now, this is where your negative would go in, but I'm not using a negative today. And then you've got your lens. The lens is just like the lens of a camera and it has apertures on there. 1.8 being the largest with the most light coming through and 16 being the least. So we are going to put it on 5.6. This is midpoint. This is a good starting point to do your test strip. If it's coming out too light, change it to four. If it's coming out too dark, open the lens to eight. Start off with three seconds. I'm going to do a three second test strip, so that's three, six and nine, to get an overview of what I'm going to do. So I've got my digital negative and I'm going to place it on my board. Um, I'm going to set, make sure as well that the enlarger is at the right height so it's covering the whole of my baseboard. I've also got my cardboard here and then I need to use my paper. So I'm just going to turn off my enlarger while I get my paper. Now I'm only doing a test strip so I'm going to make sure that I'm going to cut my paper around about two to three inches wide uh, of a large piece of paper, an 8 by 10 I could probably get one, two, three, four at a push if I wanted to, but I like to have quite a wide test strip because then I can see what I'm doing. Okay, I've got my test strip and I'm going to place it underneath the contact print. Make sure your contact print is nice and flat or else you won't get a sharp image. 
using my board, I'm going to then cover up two thirds of my print, expose it, and again, and last one. So that's a total of nine seconds. I'm now going to take you over to the developer. One of the most important things about the developer, and this is another error that can occur, is not leaving it in long enough. So it's extremely important that you leave your paper in for the full one and a half minutes, making sure that it's fully soaked and it's agitated. This is how you get water rings on it. This is how you get um, faded prints, uneven development. So it's extremely important that you uh, cover it over completely. When it comes to final print, make sure that you flip it up the other way and then you know it's going to be completely covered. Okay. Drip off as much as you possibly can. One minute in the stop and five minutes in the fixer. Remember, it can be in the fixer for up to one and a half minutes before you can take it outside and have a look at it. So the first thing that I can see when I've turned my light on is that my building is far too dark. I can see that the three has got a nice sky in it, but six and nine are really, really dark. So I'm not gonna change the timer what I'm gonna do is close the lens and have another go. So from 5.6, I'm going to close it to 11, but I'm not gonna change the timer. Now that I've changed it to 11, it's a little bit on the pale side. So I'm gonna change it in the between to eight. Test strip, three is too light with very little contrast in the sky. Nine is too dark with no detail in the shadows. So therefore, I'm going to go for a six. It's got everything that I need from the white to the mid grays all the way through to the black. I don't necessarily have to go for six. I could go for seven or I could even go for five or I can even do half times. But for this one, that's what I'm going to do. Couple of things to remember. Make sure that your digital negative is flat on the paper and try to make it as central as possible. Also, make sure you do not touch the negative or the paper with wet hands. Not only will you ruin the negative, but you will also ruin the paper with fingerprints. Another tip as well about drying your hands, remember the towels are on either side of the wet trays, is that you do not want to touch this timer with wet hands because it's linked to the electricity and you'll get yourself an electric shock. Be safe, take your time and make a great print. So I'm super happy with this final print. Now it's just a case of drying it 